Welcome to Pathway to Peace with Terry McIntosh. I'm Gary Morris. This is a timely message in search of a positive truth that brings healing, peace, and safety to the individual as well as the entire nation. Hello, Saints. This is Terry McIntosh in for the next few minutes. Well, I told you last week in our intro that we're going to start discussing some very difficult subjects, uh, particularly relating to the Jewish state of Israel, the relationship of Palestinians, and God's real plan for those people groups. Now, there's so much to discuss, it's going to take a while to go through it. But that's all right, bear with me. And remember, we're looking for the truth of the matter. We want to see things from God's perspective, His point of view, not man's, not that of political agendas, because there's no shortage of those things. Often what we are taught and hear from pulpits and and uh, other venues are politically organized. They are uh, for the purpose of advancing political goals. Now, there's not anything to do here but just jump right in, so let's do it. Because to advance the kingdom of God in search of solutions that will bring about spiritual and natural reconciliation, we have to seek a, a fresh understanding of God's plan. Now, many of us think, well, I know that already. I've heard that. I know it. I've studied it. I've read the books, and I know the history. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just think you do. I thought I did until the Lord got hold of me and showed me an entirely different perspective, and it's from his point of view. So I encourage you, stay with me on this. Let's not be arrogant. Let's realize that we can be wrong about some things. You know, a teacher, if, if, if a teacher quits learning, he's not a good teacher anymore. And if a teacher can't be wrong, he's dangerous. And I apply that to myself as well. So I'm making myself accountable to you, so follow me. I want you to get out your Bible and put it in your hand. I want you to take notes. I want you to study this. I don't want you to believe it just because I say it. But we have to reexamine the whole counsel of God in search of an elusive truth that is important. It's elusive because it's been buried deeply, cloaked by the enemy's strategy to steal, kill, and destroy. That strategy has worked well to the harm of millions of people throughout the ages. But hope looms on the horizon, saint. If the various Christian communities and denominations will lay hold of God's truth. We have to set aside our religious and political prejudice in order to grasp it. Let's put our feet on the path and go do it. The Christian community is at odds regarding Israel since the Jewish state was founded in 1948. And a resurrected Bible truth can now close in on this divisive subject if we'll let the Bible do the talking while we do the walking. The subject is of great importance. It's, it's important because Christianity has been taught wrongly. We have been walking in an opposite way to God's plan. We're doing it today, and it's lending much harm in our own lives, in our nation, and for the descendants of Israel itself. Now, things we talk about are not always going to be pleasant, but we have to do it in order to unveil the truth. That's because myth, fabricated historical facts, yes, lies, and unrighteousness is exposed in the light of the Holy Scriptures as we're led by the Holy Spirit to discern and understand what the Lord has said. Yeah, it's going to hurt, but the journey is necessary and well worth it. You know, previously when Israel was founded in 1948, the Christian community recognized that as fulfillment of God's plan and promise to restore the nation of Israel in the natural sense. I understand how that happened and why it happened, but I wasn't aware of what all went on behind the scenes about it. There's a devil mixed up in all of this as well. Uh, you shouldn't be surprised about that. You find the devil in church. So where God's doing something, you're going to find the devil doing something else. We've wrongly believed that the Palestinians are all Arabs, descendants of Ishmael. 
Many have even believed and suggested that the, they are descendants of the biblical Philistines. Well, that was a natural conclusion at the time. Even Palestinians, some of them believed that. But it's not the reality. Facts are stubborn things. You know, no matter what uh, we feel about it, what we think about it, you don't alter the fact. The best you can do with a fact you don't like is to spin it, to twist it, to deny it, to create alternative facts and present it as a truth. Now, we know that happens all the time in politics, law, personal uh, life experiences, and yes, in our own religion, even in Christianity. But you know, facts are always going to be facts, and God is not impressed. He is not moved by our alternative versions of his own facts. So I'm going to give you a fact right now to, as I said, to lay the, the course for better clarity and understanding of God's plan. And I'm excited about it. Now, it's a hard truth. And it shakes the foundations of our own theologies that we've come to conclusions of. I want to say before I do this about the, the Palestinian Arabs. You know, they are Arab by culture and by religion. And that's it. The vast majority of Palestinian people today are Hebraic descendants of Joseph. The Bible tells the tale, and modern DNA testing confirms the Bible story. Shocking! What? What are you saying, Terry McIntosh? Are you telling me that all those Arabs over there wearing those headdresses are actually Hebrews? Yes, Saint, I am. That's what I'm telling you. Yes, I am, Saint. I'm telling you that, and I'm telling you with a heart full of love for you, for the Jews, and for those Hebraic Palestinians. Now, not all Palestinians are Hebraic descendants of Joseph. There is a mix of Arab genes in their gene pool. But then again, not all Jews are direct descendants of Israel either. There's a great mix. There's not one pure bloodline anywhere. Now, I know I'm dropping a bombshell on you here this week, but we have to do this. And let me be clear. This is not about genealogy in context of being superior to others, as some will suppose. Opponents to this stubborn fact will often quote Titus chapter 3, verse 9, which says, But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law because these are unprofitable and useless. Well, amen to that. But this is not about genealogy in the context of being superior. To claim superiority in a closer relationship to God because of one's heritage is foolish and useless. The subject of DNA research is for the single purpose of identifying a lost house of Israel and in its proper context, does not suggest superiority. It's simply for the sake of identity. Now, if it's okay to identify Jews as Hebraic, it should be okay to identify Palestinians as Hebraic when they are Hebraic. It's no more wrong to identify Palestinians as descendants of Israel as it is to identify Jews as descendants of Israel. To dismiss this resurrected Bible truth based on Titus 3, verse 9, would in itself be foolish. If anyone ever makes a case for superiority, it's on behalf of the Jews. The political community and millions of Christian peers proclaim Jews to be God's chosen people, specially loved and favored high above all. This is a claim that must be reviewed from God's point of view without the trappings of politics and religious agendas in order to dig up the long-buried truth. Now, regarding the DNA, test results confirm that the Palestinian gene pool is an exact match with the Jewish gene pool, with the exception of a small mix of Arab genes, as would be expected due to the advent of Islam and Arabic immigration to the country. The Hebrew University in Jerusalem and other leading academic research centers confirmed the findings. Shocking, I know. 
But if DNA research was all that one had to rely upon to identify a Hebrew lineage, it would prove to be sufficient in a court of law. The DNA is a real scientific tool that God placed in man for purpose. Now, people who don't like this little fact of DNA uh, identifying Palestinians as a brick, uh, they have a real problem with it, and they try to dismiss it in various ways by downgrading it, making false claims about it. But you know what? Not a single one of them, not one, has ever conducted scientific research. They have sought to hold on to their old theology because they love it more than they love truth. They have buried their heads. They've stuck it down in concrete. They refuse to pull the head out and look at the truth because they love the lie. And let's be careful about loving lies because if we love a lie, God will send us a great deception. Oh boy, that's already been served up. But like I said, if, if DNA was all we had, it, it's enough to hold up in court. We know scores of Palestinians who can, uh, they already knew they were a brick. They traced their, their family lineage back and to a time whenever their ancestors converted to Islam and they adopted the Arabic culture. That is not what we depend on. DNA only confirms what the Bible teaches about it. And this is what's so exciting. The Bible must be our final authority. Like we said last week, we're going to go with what the Bible says about it, and we're going to run through that through the next few weeks. Now, what we do with this fact will make all the difference. We're going to center on biblical truths and how the truth is better served. And I'm presenting all this for the purpose of facilitating the day of reconciliation and restoration of the whole house of Israel and Christian unity toward that goal. The challenge is great, but the ancient voice of truth is being heard. All peacemakers are an asset to the work of God, but Christians are different in one big respect. We rely on the Bible and teach from the Bible, not a human rights perspective with a melting pot of religious affiliations. The Lord's reaching out to reconcile the two Hebraic brothers of Jews and Palestinians. And any effort to divide the two is just wrong. We should facilitate and assist the lost brother in his uphill climb to his rightful biblical standing. We've been lied to. And it's been said to us over and over and over, and we've just accepted it. But truth matters. It's our responsibility to discern the Word of God properly. We discussed that last week as well. It's going to take Jesus, but He has a plan to reach Him. And we can be a part of it, saints. And that's exciting. Now, anything else is just dangerous and leads to harm of the individual Israel, Palestine, and to our own nation. God, forgive us for putting politics first. God, forgive us for religious bigotry and racial prejudice. God, empower us to show Christ-like love and mercy to Palestinians as well as Israelis as we seek the welfare of both people. Can that be your prayer with me, Saint? Under no circumstance do I suggest that the Christian world should abandon Jewish Israel. And nothing that I present on this program should ever be considered as anti-Semitic. I've been accused of that wrongly and falsely by those who don't love the truth. Hey, my time's up this week, so I've got to run. Come back next week, same time, same station. We're going to open up the Bible and discover what God says. Send me an email at info at usajourney.us. That's info at usajourney.us. It's so, okay. Time's up. God bless you. McIntosh out. You can write us at Post Office Box 766. Paducah, Kentucky, 42002, USA. That's Post Office Box 766, Paducah. That's spelled P-A-D-U-C-A-H, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002, USA.